Hello again. My name is Mark Mandel. I am a developer advocate for Google Cloud, coming to hang out with you today to do some development on a little project that I've been working on for a while with a bunch of other people called Agones. Uh, it's an open source project for running game servers on top of Kubernetes. And Kubernetes is a project for running servers, uh, open source project for running and orchestrating uh, containers across uh, a wide variety of machines. Uh, I'm repping a little bit of Firebase today on my t-shirt because they're good friends of ours and we have my cup of tea as always. Though I'm in the office, so I have a paper cup. I think I need to get some nice cups for when I'm uh, <laughs> when I'm in the office. Oh, that's good. But yeah, talking for an hour means that I mean, a hot cup of tea is super nice. Excellent. So uh, what are we what are we going to work on today? So uh, in the previous stream that we did, we did some work on um, setting up our custom resource definitions. And um, for <coughs> for uh, what do we call it? Fleet allocation. So let's do a little bit of recap on, on some of that real quick, just so we can see it. So let's actually pop over the screencast so we can have a look. Um, so we're doing some work here on this thing called fleet allocations. Uh, so if we have a look, we have already set up a custom resource definition. So we we're able to basically recreate this thing. Where are we? Uh, fleet. Oh, I called it an allocation. I should probably change the name of that file. Um, here we have our fleet allocation. Ah, we didn't name it what I thought I wanted to name it. All right, we should change that. Um, that's fine. I, we found our first bug thing we're going to work on today. And um, let's actually make a note here uh, to do uh, change this to just <laughs> this will be fun. To fleet allocation is what we want to call it. And then we'd already uh, created the um, actual Go code. So what we've done is we come in here and we go fleet allocation. So we've done it in our code here. And come on, open. There we go. Uh, so we have our fleet allocation, takes a value of like what fleet we want and returns back a status with the, with, the, with the actual values of the fleet that have actually been set up. So that's that's sort of setting things up. <coughs> if we want to see a fleet in action, just uh, so we're, I have one already uh, running, uh, get fleet, there's one there. Um, if we can see it's already got, here, describe fleet simple UDP, there we go. Uh, we can see there that it's got two of them. I actually downscaled it earlier, but you know what? Let's let's um, if we look at game servers, we can see we have two of them. If we QTTL edit the fleet, simple UDP. So we'll just we we'll just edit this in line, which is super nice. Bump that up to four. Uh, we should now see that we have uh, where are we get game servers. We should have a bunch of them, which we do. <laughs> we have way too many. Um, it's all right. That'll come back down. Oh no, we have four. What am I talking about? I always think there's too many for some reason. Um, <clears throat> so we can see that our fleet can, can scale up and scale down. But what we want to do is we want to be able to say, hey, this particular fleet, let me allocate one in specific, uh, specifically at, from you. Uh, before we do that, we actually have a couple of little bits of housekeeping, housekeeping that I just want to take, take advantage of before we're doing. Uh, Boy and Air, uh, just if you have a look down below, I'm working on a project um, called Agones for running game servers across uh, Kubernetes clusters, so large scales of machines. Uh, we're working on allocating out um, a particular game server out of a fleet of game servers. So these are, these are all game servers here. Uh, we were seeing that there's four of them. If I want to describe one of them just to give you some values, um, where are we? Describe, whoops, game server, simple. Give me one of these, anyone. Uh, it's a game server. It's come up. Um, and you can see it has an IP and a, and a port and that kind of stuff. So um, we, have, we have game servers, and they're ready, and they're good to go. So we want to do some allocations out of there. So the way we want to do that is we want to be able to, much in the same way as we've defined, say, a fleet, we want to be able to define a allocation, a, f a fleet allocation, and it's going to give us back a bunch of values uh, from that. Um, so I'm going to do two housekeeping things, one of which is in here that I forgot to do last week. <coughs> um, so we created these fleet allocations. We generated a bunch of code so that we could interact with them that uh, gives us a bunch of um, uh, we, gives us a bunch of code for, uh, whatchamacallit, 
for interacting with those resources on top of Kubernetes. Uh, Buoyant Air, ha, I haven't learned about GCP. This is fine. Uh, Kubernetes runs on anything, so it doesn't. it's not Google Cloud Platform specific. Uh, you can run uh, Kubernetes either on your local machine, you can run it on us, on uh, Google K Kubernetes Engine, you can run it on AWS, you can run it on Azure, you can run it on your own machines. It's totally open source. So that's the cool thing about Kubernetes is you can run it anywhere. And so if you're looking to run game servers and you want to use it with Agones, which is now it's still 0 0.1, um, that's the cool thing, right? You can really run it anywhere you want, which, is, which, which, which I think is the kind of really cool, compelling thing. All right, so uh, two two pieces of housekeeping. One, we want to change this, but before we do that, um, I forgot to do this step down here, which I keep forgetting to do. <coughs> uh, when you create a new uh, resource inside, uh, basically a custom resource definition, you need to do this thing called add types. I'm actually not 100% sure exactly what it does, but it's just one of the steps you have to do when you do it. Otherwise, there's internal. Basically, you're registering this thing uh, internally so uh, the, where are we, fleet, allocation, uh, so that it knows what's going on. Um, and fleet, allocation, list. It basically just registers the types internally so it knows what's happening. Um, but I keep forgetting to do it, and things still work, but very random things break. So uh, we'll put that on the list. OK, that's, that's one piece of housekeeping. The other piece of housekeeping uh, is we wanted to change this to a fleet allocation. So let's do that while we're in here. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. We'll call that a fleet allocation, and those will be fleet allocations. Short name, um, FLA. FLA is probably a good short name. Uh, I'm trying to think of that, and fleet allocation. That's better. Uh, from last week, I'm not going to worry about validation too much. Right now, we'll come back around to this. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll not worry about it for the moment, but we'll definitely come back to that and, and do some more work on there. Cool. Um, also, let me know if the editor is too small or anything like that. You wanted uh, the text size bumped up. Uh, do definitely let me know. I will be happy to do that. Um, I have a slightly different setup here than what I normally have at home, so I'm just making sure that the text size is all good. Cool. All right, so that, that does that bit. Okay, so the piece I want to talk about today primarily is um, <coughs> what's called a uh, mutation webhook or a mutation webhook configuration. Um, I'm going to actually pop over into the Kubernetes docs. Um, here we go, reference, perfect. Um, I'm going to pop into the 1.9 reference. Now, these are actually hugely, hugely powerful. Uh, we talked a little bit about it when we, when we met on Tuesday. Uh, but just to recap, these are really cool. So these are basically webhooks. Uh, so we take some HTTP data that is able to intercept when resources, so any types of Kubernetes resources, absolutely anything at all, uh, intercept when they come in, and then mutate them on the fly. Um, this is hugely powerful because you can do some crazy stuff with it. It's also a potential foot gun <laughs> because, um, what should we call it? It's a potential foot gun because you can change anything on the fly. So if you have teammates that you're also doing stuff inside a cluster with, you can really mess with them if you really want to. There's some awful, wonderful things you could do here. But, um, super, super powerful. Um, so if you're doing anything also inside Kubernetes in terms of controllers or uh, custom resource definitions, basically extending Kubernetes in, in, in any way, you'll get very familiar with this section, which is the reference section of Kubernetes, because it gives you a really good view of exactly what's going on. <laughs> Fred Duchess, I like the foot gun phrase. <laughs> foot gun, I can't take credit for foot gun. Foot gun is definitely not mine, but it is a it is a wonderful uh, turn of phrase. So uh, here's, our, here's our mutating webhook configuration. Um, I've actually done a bunch of the plumbing here. We talked about this a little before, and we'll look at that really briefly. But uh, you get you get to see where are we? Webhooks. There we go. Webhooks. They can see sort of the the, the like the documentation here, and you can specify like what operations they're going to have and what they're going to do. Um, I'll actually come over here and have a look at one. Uh, we've got this already. Here we go. Install. Oh, I was going to rename this. Let's do that real quick. So this should be a fleet allocation. No, I don't want you to search. That's fine. OK, cool. Um, what's the word? Here we go, mutating webhook. <coughs> uh, so with, this is using Helm, so you can ignore the templating parts. That's fine. Um, there's a mutating webhook configuration. Uh, it gets a name, which is fine. Uh, there's a backing service. So there's actually an HTTP endpoint. 
um, and that it ends up calling. So we just literally anything that can provide an HTTP handler, or actually an HTTPS handler in this case, um, then that can provide a webhook, and that's totally fine. Um, a free Duchess asks, are webhooks just a subset of APIs? I'm not sure what you mean by subset of APIs. Do you mean the Kubernetes API? Uh, or just a general API. So the webhook configurations really can be answered by anything uh, as long as there's a endpoint. So uh, the easy way is, is configure a service. You can actually point it at a particular URL if you want to as well. Um, the only thing that needs to happen for a mutating webhook is that it has to have this public uh, key in the CA bundle value. Uh, eventually, we're going to dynamically create this. Right now, they've been hard-coded. Uh, so you need to just basically generate your own self-signed cert put the public in key in here so that Kubernetes knows, oh, when I'm making a request against this uh, HTTP endpoint, I know for sure that this is the thing that I'm meant to be calling and like nothing really bad has happened. Um, outside of that, uh, you can then just specify rules for what your webhook will be called. Um, so I'm going to put everything the way I've, I've, I've sort of struggled with and I think this will work and we'll see how it scales. Um, we're going to basically pass all our mutation requests into a single webhook. Um, and then sort of allocate internally with software. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I think it'll work quite well. In theory, you could have multiple, multiple webhooks. You could do all that kind of stuff as much as you want. Uh, we're going to pass everything in uh, to a single one. So basically, you have a set of rules. What do you want to uh, capture? And you can these are all arrays, so you can just add values to it. So we're going to pass in everything from the stable agonies group. Uh, we're going to, right now, we're already checking for game servers. We set the default values for game servers using this. Uh, but we want fleet allocations, right? Because when we pass in a fleet allocation, we want something to be allocated straight away and return back with a value. We basically want it to be almost like a, a very standard REST API. But we're going to use the Kubernetes uh, management system to handle this for us. Um, and the API versions, and then what operations we want. So here we're just doing create, right? That's it. That's, that's the only thing we want to do. A potentially interesting thing, there's also a failure policy. By default, this is ignore. So if a webhook fails, it just ignores it and like pretends like it didn't happen. Um, I've got mine set up so that, uh, whatchamacallit, so that if something bad happens, it literally just falls over and dies. Like, that's it. <laughs> um, I prefer it that way because uh, this is an integral part of how the system is meant to work, and I'd much rather know about it than not. Um, but that's really it. So, okay. So everything goes through this mutate um, endpoint. I've already set this up, and it points to... Uh, my general Agones controller. It's just a binary that runs. It's nothing really that special. Um, but I have some plumbing that already does this. Um, so why don't we have a look at the plumbing. Basically, I have this package in here. I think it's util. Yeah, webhooks. So there are actually a couple of different types of webhooks, but they all take kind of the same structure. Uh, and I've basically already set this up with... It's just a bit of Go code that runs the HTTP server with a particular cert file. Um, and then you're able to add handlers to it, much like a standard Go HTTP request handler. Like there's nothing, um, like there's a, uh, here we go, add handler, right? Uh, what's the path? So it'll be mutate. We'll have a look at then like what, what type of thing, what operation do I want to pick up on? Um, and then it does some of the handling that comes through. So when you have a, where are we? When you have, here we go. When you have a webhook, all that happens is it sends through a bunch of JSON. It's really it in the body. And the JSON is a thing called uh, an emission review. <coughs> uh, we can actually see that, uh, ob not obviously, but necessarily, emission review. Really? It doesn't show up in here? Ah, it doesn't show up in here. All right, that's fine. Uh, we'll have a look at it in here. Um, an admission review is basically a the structure of everything that happens with webhooks. They all work exactly the same. Um, so you'll have a request that'll come through. It'll tell you all the information about it, like what kind is it, what was its resource, right? Is it a game server? Is it a fleet? What's going on? Uh, if the name, if the object has a name, what namespace it comes from? Is it a create? Is it a removal? Uh, and then basically, it just punches through a whole bunch of JSON through this raw extension, right? It's just it's just shoving through JSON. So you have to kind of deserialize that, pass that through, um, and then you end up pushing uh, stuff back out. And we'll talk a little bit about that too. In a minute, but basically we get this this uh, admission review. So I've got plumbing here where it does all the decoding, pushes it into a review, calls the handler. <coughs> so this means that if we want to look at another example of where I've used this, uh, game servers. That's a good version. Here we go. There's a mutate. Here we go. Um, 
I've got it set up so basically it takes in an emission review and it returns an emission review or and or an error if something's gone horribly horribly wrong. Um, and we can we'll look at we'll look at all the pieces of what we're going to do in this part. So, all right. So let's let's set this up and get this going. So we basically we we need to be able to manage this emission review thing that comes through, and that enables us to change this object on the fly, which is really really nice. All righty. Um, really, everything you do with webhooks is just pushing JSON in and pushing JSON out. It's not quite, I would say, as nice as dealing with some of the other type of Kubernetes type stuff. You don't normally have to deal with this kinds of JSON and whatnot. Um, but I feel like because it's a webhook and kind of you're working at slightly a higher layer, I guess, in some ways, it's not terrible. Uh, so we've already been passing the webhook. Um, all right, so add handler slash mutate because that's the... And this is, I mean, maybe I'll pull this out one day and like turn it into a proper library for other people to use. That's fine. Uh, what do I want? That's what I want. Uh, schema, uh, schema group kind. How did I do this over here? That's all the internal kinds and group kinds and that kind of stuff. They're all these internal registries. Uh, group kind is a combination of, there we go, perfect, of the group, which is stable agones.dev, uh, and then kind is like the resource name. Um, in fact, I'm going to actually steal that entire signature right there because that'll be good. All right. Uh, ba, ba, ba. All right, so that is my v1 alpha 1, which I'm going to rename in a minute. And v1 alpha 1 will be a import alias of stable v1 alpha 1. There you go. So we're saying uh, anything that comes through that has that is type actually we want fleet allocation. F and, and here's a weird and interesting thing if you care at all. Um, when dealing with kinds, it's singular and uppercase. When dealing with resource names, it's lowercase and plural because that's just Kubernetes and one of those weird things that Kubernetes does. Um, just as a, a rule of thumb to keep in your head if you're ever playing with this stuff. Um, all right, cool. Create, uh, that looks about right. And I'm willing to bet that I can rename that from here. Yes, I can. Beautiful. All right. So I don't have a creation mutation handler. So let's create one of those. Uh, oh, it's not going to do what I want. Uh, usually IntelliJ is pretty smart and works out how to do that really well. So I'm going to steal one. Uh, all right. All right. So, uh, creation mutation handler. Um, we'll take. What do I want? How do I want to do this? Um, we'll intercept when a fleet allocation is created, and um, allocate. It a game server, assuming that one is available. If not, we'll return an error. That seems reasonable. That seems like a reasonable thing for it to do. Cool. All right. <coughs> All right. So. This will be interesting. I'm trying to think through like how this should step through. So uh, let's 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 write this as I'm gonna write this as a series of to dos. So let's think through the process here. So first, I need to uh, deserialize the JSON into a fleet allocation. Need to do that first, um, and then assuming that goes fine, uh, then I need to look up the fleet uh, fleet named in the fleet allocation because that's given an actual name and I need to do that so um, <coughs> yep so there's that um, and then okay it's an interesting question we should probably pull this out into its own thing but we'll, we'll write it to do here um, get game servers for that fleet and we'll keep things simple. I think we can do some more work um, and grab one of 
copy game servers and mark it allocated return the allocated um, game server oh, actually I should say um, we'll talk about this in a minute it'll be create a JSON patch so we need to update the fleet allocation with the game server details now this will be interesting this will be interesting um, do, 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 do. there's some interesting things that could potentially go wrong here but we'll get that um, which will be which will be fun this will be fun this will be interesting all right cool all righty um, we'll go through this step by step I think there's there's a lot of meat in here and we'll probably end up ripping this apart but um, this feels like a good a good approach, if nothing else. Um, I'm actually going to commit this. Uh, git commit. Uh, yeah, rename CRD to fleet allocation. Uh, made a bunch of to-dos. Cool. I'm pretty brutal with my Git histories, so I'm not too fussed about uh, how much I do stuff. All right, cool. So first thing I'm going to need is a fleet allocation. Um, do, 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 fleet allocation pointer to a... Uh, what am I... Uh, yes. I've done that the wrong way around. I can never remember and, and go for whatever reason. All right. Ugh. Oh my god, why is my brain not working? How did I do this previously? Uh, oh, I did it that way? Oh, that's even easier. Eh, I'll steal that then. Having one of those brain brain days. How do I how do I deserialize that? <laughs> Alright. Fleet allocation. Uh it'll be that. Uh, you're gonna complain. I just want standard JSON, please. Yep, I'm carrying JSON. Perfect. This will be a Fleet allocation, and that'll be fleet allocation. <coughs> uh, do, 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 error on marshaling original fleet allocation. So a lot of this is going to end up being some plumbing as it comes in. All right, so we deserialize the JSON into the fleet allocation. All right, so we take in the request. It has this thing called an object. Under object.raw is the uh, JSON. So we just push that into an object so we can do stuff with it. So now we should actually have a fleet allocation. Uh, that should be pretty good. Oh, let's get comfortable. Cryptojord. Um, <laughs> I can never pronounce anyone's Twitch names. Hey, everyone. How's you doing? How you doing? Good to see you as well. Thanks for joining us today. All right. So um, let's think this through for a sec. So I feel like I'm going to need some kind of like um, allocation function to do probably most of this work. What would that signature look like? What would that What would that look like? Um, yeah, I don't know what to do here. Just real quick, uh, write a test for this. We'll come back to that. I do a lot of to-do driven development, as you can see. So, so let's say, let's let's write this out because I want to think about this. Uh, we'll call it allocate, um, which is fine. Uh, allocates a game server from a given. Fleet. Well, actually, if I'm writing that, that makes sense. Okay, so the receiver is the uh, pointer to a controller. Yeah, that should be C. Thank you. And it feels like that should take a pointer to a fleet. That feels that feels right. And it's going to. It's going to return a pointer to a game server or an error if something goes wrong. That feels like a good thing to do. Okay. Um, <laughs> Ray Duchess says, crucial part of becoming a successful streamer <laughs> is being able to read these names on the fly. All right, cool. Um, to do implement and write tests. All right. So that feels, that feels like a good... Um, a good function for doing this. I think that feels okay. I still I see some potential issues down the line, but all right. Um, let's but let's let's 
ignore that. I'm gonna drop these in here. So we're gonna we're gonna pretend like this works. Uh, we're just gonna panic on this. Implement me. All right, we'll come back to you. Um, and we'll finish up the plumbing here. All right, so we'll we'll assume this thing works somehow, and we'll work from there. <coughs> all right, sweet. All right, so all right, so we've got this this um, admission review that's come in. Uh, and we want to be able to spit out our change. So, um, all right. So we actually need to look up our fleet first. Sorry, we need to do that. That's 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 not part of this because allocate takes a fleet. So let's let's do that. That's actually pretty straightforward um, because we have we have a bunch of stuff in here. So fleet uh, actually it'll be fleet error equals. Um, Yeah, this will work. This will, I think this will work. Um, fleet error equals C dot fleet lister. So we want it out of the, um, what should we call it? Out of the cache. That's the lister. So that's the uh, informer factory is, is, is that. So that's going to give us the Kubernetes, the local, the local cache that we have. Uh, namespace will be the same namespace as our allocation because everything should be in the same namespace. Um, and then we'll get fleet allocation dot uh, name. Okay, cool. Now, hmm, if this fails, <coughs> if this fails, say this returns an error. Now this could just fall over and die uh, because maybe say your Kubernetes master is down or something horrific happened inside your cluster and that's bad. In which case then, um, in which case, then, like we want to return that error. I feel like that's something we want to be like, nope, go away. That's that's that goes that goes bye bye. That being said, if somebody's put a bad fleet name, right? So like allocate from foo when foo fleet doesn't actually exist, that feels to me like something we want to report back. We want to just be like, hey, that's actually really bad, and you shouldn't do that. Um, and we can do that. Uh, mutation webhooks. Yeah, we, we should be able to do that uh, in one way, or shape, or form. Um, do we want to do that right now? You know what? Maybe we skip that right now. Maybe we move, just move forward. So we'll do something more along the lines of... Um, error, for right now, if error doesn't ill, return errors.wrap. Um, and we'll see what it looks like. We'll see what happens. We'll see what the experience is like, and we'll kind of take it from there. I think that's... Um, so... And uh, error retrieving fleet percentage s. Um, could not retrieve fleet percentage s, where we will take fleet dot, oh, actually, fa dot name. Uh, actually, I should say return, uh, where are we? There we go. So we're just returning the review that came in and spitting it back out on the other side. Okay, so there's some there's some stuff inside a mission review for like returning particular uh, causes and like why stuff went wrong and that kind of stuff. For now, um, yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna add a note to myself. Uh, return to this, and if re uh, fleet doesn't exist. Maybe return a nicer error or a nicer cause or message. The nice thing about that is that when um, <coughs> when I'm using my kubectl tool or say the API for example, um, I get nicer error messages when things go bad. Uh, when I use causes and stuff inside the admission review admission review response, um, so that's handy. It's useful. It's actually quite useful. Um, but we'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, so, okay, yes, this fails if we can't find the fleet for right now. It's just going to die. And we'll see how that looks. That might, that might be fine. It might be good enough. It might provide enough information to just be like, nope, sorry, you're out. <coughs> um, so we'll have a look at that. Uh, just actually as a reminder to myself, if I've got, yeah, if I go into webhooks, where's my handler? Handler, if I get an error... Okay, handle. Yeah, how do I, how do I handle this inside of my own stuff? Okay, oh, I see, I see. All right, I write an internal service error with the error in the information. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, and do I write the? 
I don't know if I write anything. All right, anyway, that's fine. I'll worry about that later. We will return to that. Um, all right, so sweet. Now we've, say in theory, allocates work, and we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, we've retrieved a fleet. Uh, now we need to allocate, so that's the other thing. All right, cool. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Where are we? Um, what do I want to do? I want to allocate. All right, yes. Oh, my God, my brain's not working. Allocate. Now, ooh, here's an interesting thing. This allocate function, I've given it a capital A. That makes it public. I actually don't need it to be public or, and or really want it to be public. So let's let's make that let's make that private. Um, yep. What did it just do? I don't know what it did. All right, it looks like that's fine. Yes. Just got to fix things. Normally, uh, normally it's pretty good. There we go. Rename. Make it allocate. There we go. Refactor. Thank you. So it is usually pretty good. All right, sweet. Um, so fleet. Oh, and we want a game server and an error. Um. <coughs> Now, uh, this gets really interesting. Um, yeah, I'm gonna follow the same pattern for now. We'll, I think we'll return to this. Um, and we're just gonna return new and error. I think we'll return to this as well, just because if there's like we have a, a warm fleet of game servers and we've got maybe like 10 of them and we have people who have allocated out 10 of those so they can play the game um that's like a real thing that can happen and we probably want to return a nicer error than just like something horrible horrible occurred um so we're going to return to this too uh return to this too maybe uh return a game server was it error i can't remember we'll have a look game server not found if there isn't a game server available. That seems that seems like a good thing to do. But for right now, it's just like bloop. Um, right now, we'll, we'll just be like, nope, this failed bad, and blow up the world because why not? We can anyway. But like this gets us this gets us towards something that may or may not work. And we'll probably need to put some logging in here too. To, keep track of what's going on um but that's all fine all right so if we've allocated in theory we're just we're just going to work on the path of success i think for now for just this this minute and then we'll come back and work out all the error conditions and stuff because i think that's going to work the best um okay so all right so we've got our fleet allocation this comes through allocate which we need to implement but we'll come back to that um and okay so once we've done so this is an interesting point here um this is something I knew nothing about before I started playing with this stuff. Uh, there's a bunch of um, basically JSON schemas or JSON standards for uh, saying this is how I want to change another JSON document. So if you may remember, um, when we're doing like our admission review, it spits out to us basically JSON. It doesn't do any work to um, basically say, <coughs> basically say, hey. This is the um, what should I call it? This is you know uh, this is the type, or I'm going to deserialize these values from this. Like like if you're handling CRDs, right? Like the API is all written. Or you're only dealing with objects, like that kind of stuff. Here we're only really working at a JSON layer, um, and there's this thing called JSON patch, which is actually kind of cool and interesting. Uh, if we pop over, I'll just have a. I think it is JSON patch. Yeah, it is JSON patch which is a standard that looks kind of like this to say basically, hey, I want to make these changes to a JSON document and I'd like them to, you to do them for you. Uh, Kubernetes supports, I think there's like three different types. Um, there's like reasons for using JSON patch. There's like limitations for custom resource definitions. It gets hinky, it's fine. Um, <coughs> but for now, uh, we need to create this patch that looks like this to say, hey, what changes we want to make uh, in, the, in the way. Um, Okay, I'm seeing some chatter going on. What do we got? Uh, da, 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 da. Everything is written in Go. Yep, everything is written in Go. Um, Go is a really nice language. I'm just uh, um, 
what is it, Tink Tinko. Um, you can probably learn like how to read it and how to write it just at a basic level in an afternoon. If you have a look at um, the standard Go tutorial, it's right near Effective Go. Uh, there's an online tutorial you can take that's part of like the Go language page. Seriously, you can get through it in an afternoon. It's a really simple language um, that you can really get started with quickly. It's one of the reasons I like it so much. All right, so we're talking about this JSON patch thing. Um, so if we have a look inside admission review real quick, I'll show you where that goes. So we, you may have noticed we had a mission request. Strangely enough, we also have this thing called a mission response. And this is like basically spitting back the values of what we're doing. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff we can do in here. In fact, actually looking through, like we're looking at some of those types of uh, error conditions. You can actually say whether like the mutation is allowed or not. Um, there's a result, which can be like, you can actually explain in here, uh, where are we? Yeah, so results, there's like messages and reasons and details about like what, what happened to go right and wrong. Um, and here's here's a uh, here's our patch. It's a series of bytes. Currently, I only support JSON patch, as you see, uh, which is basically like we're just going to edit that um, original. We're saying like these are the edits we want to make to that original JSON as it comes through. So rather than thinking about it in terms of resources coming in, just think about it. basically you're just manipulating JSON documents, um, and that's really it. Um, now, how do we actually do that? How do we create this JSON patch? Um, so basically, all right, so here we go. I will, we'll do it over here and I'll, I'll steal some stuff from the other place. But, uh, so what we need to do is create a new GS. Actually, no, I don't want to do that. I want to create a new fleet. No, it's a new allocation. So <coughs> I want to create the new version with the changes that I want. So let's start with that. This is standard like object stuff. Our standard like, yeah, so we have this thing called deep copy that's generated for us by the client go code. So we can do that. Uh, and then we can say new fa dot uh, status uh, equals. So the status may or may not be set. So let's actually set that fleet allocation status. That takes a game server, and we set the game server. All right. So that adds at it at a um, at a what we call it at the object level. But we need this as a JSON document. So let's create a JSON document. So um, what did I call it in the other place? I'm just going to have a quick look. Uh, oh, actually, here we go. I actually just realized something. I'm just looking at the other code. Um, I don't need to create a new version. And I'll tell you why in a second. So I can just set it on the original. And then I can say new FA. We'll say it that. Um, Error equals JSON dot Marshall. Yes, I never remember which written Marshall Marshall. So I want to create this. I want to turn this into a JSON document. So we're going to do that. Uh, if error does not equal nil, uh, if that goes bad for whatever reason, that's actually really bad. So return errors dot wrap. Uh, if you haven't used written Go. Um, this is just a nice utility for wrapping uh, errors inside errors and doing stack traces and stuff. It's really handy. I use it for everything. Um, uh, error. Quick. Error serializing. Serializing. Uh, fleet allocation. Percentage S to JSON. name. Oh, and I've done it badly. View. There we go. Now what I want to do is basically compare um, compare the old JSON document to the new JSON document that we have. Um, and there is a library that will create the patch for us from comparing those two documents together, which takes a lot of the work out of it for it, which is really nice. So um, I'm just going to steal that from, from another spot that I did. Here we go. <coughs> I'm going to steal pretty much all this stuff. Because it's easier than trying to remember exactly how it all works. So there's this library. All right, so here we go. There's a library that takes that takes uh, one byte array and another byte array and creates a patch from it. And this is patch object. Strangely enough, it's actually like an actual object. Uh, it's nothing. It's nothing more than that. Um, and then we are actually able to take that patch and convert that into uh, fleet allocation. 
uh, and turn that into a JSON document, which we can then uh, attach. So let's actually just update this. So this is a query allocation. same language. All right, so we <coughs> create a patch with this JSON patch library. Uh, if you're curious to see what it is, here we go. Um, GitHub.com map bear JSON patch. It works. I haven't had a problem with it yet. There's a few JSON patch libraries for go around. Um, it takes some of the work out of this. Like, I don't want to be doing this by hand. That would kind of suck. That wouldn't be fun. All right. Um, I'm going to say let's, we've got some logging here that I had previously, so I'm just going to keep it. Where I spit out the patch, um, nice. Uh, and then we tell it basically what we want at the end. Uh, we have to do some pointer juggling here because Go. Um, uh, so we're telling it's a patch type JSON. We spit out the JSON and then we return review and nil. So it's a lot of plumbing, unfortunately. I tried to remove some of it with some of my plumbing code itself, but I can't really get away with it always. Um, almost wonder if I could in some ways, but mm, it's fine. It's fine. I still have to do a lot of this plumbing a lot of the place. I wonder if there's some other things we could do to make this a little bit easier, but um, all right, so we can get rid of that to do. Uh, all right, so we want to return to those. That's fine. But that should give us a basic structure. So what I'm going to do is format that. Use go imports. Give us a nice formatting for that. There we go. That should be all nicely appropriately formatted. Uh, and we'll commit that just so we have that as a record. Uh, first pass at mutation webhook plumbing code. Cool. Uh, if you actually want to follow along, I will push that up to my uh, my fork, which is github.com slash markmandel uh, slash You can actually even see that being available if you want to follow along at home. OK. <coughs> so assuming that works, um, I'm going to write some tests from that at some point soon, uh, maybe even today. We'll see how we go with time. Um, but we want to implement a allocation. OK, so I think let's start with the simplest, simplest, simplest allocation we could potentially ever do, uh, which is let's grab all the game servers for that fleet, uh, loop through them until we um, until we find one that is ready. That's the state that it's in. Uh, and then mark it allocated. And return it. Now there's some interesting weird stuff that could potentially happen here that I'm not quite sure how we want to handle, such as like, say we allocate a server and then for some reason um, this fails down here or like basically anything like, so we allocate, where are we? We do our allocation. Oh, wow, it's really up here. So it's up here. But then in theory, any other part through here could fail. And if it does, what do we want to do about it? Really, we should like to put the game server back in the fleet. Um, <coughs> I don't know. That's actually a really interesting problem, and I'm not quite sure what to do at that point. So um, what happens if um, post allocation something fails? Right. But I think we're gonna we're, we're sticking with keeping things simple for the moment and just working through the the path to success, and then hopefully things should work out pretty well. Um, and then we can we can start picking it apart. There's a bunch of stuff as well. Like we want to make sure we handle um, if two allocations happen at the same time, they don't try and allocate the same thing. Like there's some stuff in there. There's some locking that we'll definitely want to do here. Uh, so lock this function. Um, stuff like that. Uh, so we'll we'll look at that in a minute. <coughs> Uh, we may also want to look at situations where there aren't game servers yet, but maybe we want to wait for a little while, something like that. Uh, that's that's another another th feature we might want to look at. Uh, do we want to wait? There is not a game server available. Cool. That gives me that gives me some some ideas. All right, that gives me some stuff to continue working on. There's there's plenty to do here. All right, so I've already written a function for getting game servers for a fleet, so I can actually just call that, which is actually quite nice. Uh, so we'll call it GS list error equals list game servers by, whoops, I had it there, game servers by fleet owner. There we go. Uh, so that's going to take 
at C game server lister. Really? Yeah, C game server. Ooh, I don't think I have that in this function. In this in this controller. This controller does not have a game server lister. It has a game server set lister, but not a game server lister. So we need to change that as well. So let's go all the way up to the top. So we have a game server set lister, but we need a game server lister. Oof. Cool, and we're gonna need to uh, game server lister. It's gonna be Adana's former game server stop lister. All right, not hard to do, but just needs to be added. So now we have access to that too. So now we can come back down here and see dot game server lister c dot game server set so i'm not going to talk much like there's a hierarchy of, of fleets to game server sets to to, to game servers but at, at the end of the day don't worry about it too much right now uh and then we have a fleet that comes through all right cool all right so that gives us that uh if there's an error here just return error um that's fine oh. uh, actually it's fine, it'll be nil. Um, why are you complaining? Cannot return. Oh, sorry, you're completely right. Okay. <coughs> um, so we've got game servers for the fleets. Um, bar. Actually, oh, this would actually be a bit neater. Ugh, what did I just do? I just broke everything. I just broke everything. All right, let's get rid of that. I'm going to say var uh, allocated pointer to a game server. Not allocation. Yeah, allocation's fine. That just makes this easier going forward. All right, so I want to set that allocation. So, all right, so for. Uh, game server in range GS list this should be relatively straightforward. Uh, if GS dot status dot uh, state equals ready uh, step everyone alpha one ready cool uh, where are we allocation equals GS and break I just stop looping cool. Now, <coughs> if, if it can't be found, we want to do something special, right? We don't want to do this. Okay. Um, sweet. Do, 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 do. Tinko, have you heard of OCaml? OCaml, yes, ML type languages. Very cool. I like those a lot. I just don't get a chance to do them ever. <laughs> All right. <coughs> For Dutch, yes. Yeah, OCaml is similar to Haskell. I've never actually written any OCaml. I've written a little bit of Haskell. I really like it, but no, not a lot of other people write in it. So, you know, there's not a lot else we can do. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna create a we're gonna call it a const or var. What do we want to do? Uh, we'll do var. Uh, basically, I want error game server not found. I think that's the right. Error game servers, which I think uh, no game server ready is probably better. I think it's error first. I think is the um, the way that <coughs> I think that's error goes first. I think is the canonical way of doing it. And go. I have a linter. It'll pick it up eventually. So I'm, I'm not going to worry about it right now. We'll come back to it. Um, so basically, if uh, allocation equals nil. Return allocation and error that. So we can actually check for that. I think we'll end up checking for it right up here where we're talking about um, if the allocation fails. Like we want we want to do something that's a little bit nicer. Um, 
but assuming it works. All right, so we, we found one. Uh, let's go on here and chat. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> cool. Now everything's good in chat. All right. So what are we? We've got 10 minutes. All right. I want to see if we can get this done or at least as much as we can. All right. So we want to market allocated. Ooh. I'm thinking through synchronization issues, but I think we'll start with this. I'm just, I'm just terrified that something here fails while something gets allocated by <coughs> I don't think I don't think I have a choice I may have to like yeah I think I think it's just gonna have to be all right I think it's just gonna have to be <coughs> <coughs> excuse me I still have some tea left let me drink that okay okay let's try this let's yeah let's like let's assume Assume success for the moment, and then we'll come back and, and assume failure. So we want to market it's allocated. So um, so where are we? Uh, just copy equals. We need an allocation. Do copy. So we need to make a copy of this so that it doesn't mess up any um, status equals. Oops, sorry, not my fault. Just copy dot uh, status dot state. There we go. Uh, so you, do, you always make a copy when you're integrating when you're when you're messing around with stuff inside Kubernetes because there's a lot of caching, um, and it should be allocated. Yeah, sweet, and that's that's really it. And then um, we will do underscore. Actually, that's not true. Um, we can actually no. Uh, how do I want to do this? GS error. Equals. Oh, I'm missing one other thing. I just realized as well, which is I need to be able to edit game servers directly, <coughs> which I can't because I don't have the required bits. So game server getter is usually uh, what we use. Game server getter. So game server getter. Uh, I've talked about this a few times. The getters are the things that hit the APIs directly, whereas the listers and the inner and like the informer factory stuff uh, it uses the local cache. You want to use the local cache as much as possible, but sometimes like this, you need to have direct access to the, uh, where are we, Econis, client dot, uh, where are we, where do I have this already? Yeah, Econis client dot, state v1 alpha one. Um, yeah, you want to be able to hit the API directly because Yes, that works. All right, cool. Uh, you want to hit the API directly. Sometimes you want to get like the most up-to-date thing, or you want to be able to edit stuff as well. So that's like super important. Okay, seven minutes. I want to see if I can get at least the base version of what I think should work working, and then we'll see how we go from there. Um, and then we, we may have to wrap up there. Okay, now we can mark it allocated. So c dot game server getter dot game servers. Uh, the namespace for all of this should be exactly the same. So we have a fleet. So we can grab that. Object meta dot namespace. Uh, where are we? Namespace dot update. GS copy. Cool. That will return <coughs> uh, a value. So uh, final. And so now we want to return GSN errors dot value. So this is a little cheeky, but it's fine. Um, error updating. Uh, Errors to wrap is nice in that if a nil gets passed through to it, then the nil will come out the other side, and then like boop, it's all good. Um, I get a question. Um, oh, I'm not talking into the mic enough. Sorry, I'm sitting down. I apologize. You could turn the volume a little bit up. I apologize for that. Normally, I'm I'm very particular on my audio. Um, so a uh, question there, uh, Tinko00, what computer am I using and what OS and what editor? So I am using uh, Dell something or other. I think it's an M3800. Um, I'm running Linux. It's actually, um, I'm actually running Xmonad on top of GNOME, though you probably can't see it from here. It's just that. And the editor is IntelliJ. Um, big IntelliJ fan. Uh, there's a Go plugin. You can also use uh, Goland as well. <coughs> or Gogland, I think, is there. Or Gogland. 
it depends on how you want to pronounce it. Um, those are those are all options. I really like I really like IntelliJ. I've been a huge fan of this for a long time. Um, all right. So in theory, this should be fine. I need to write tests for this. Um, where do we want to, What do we want to do? I'm just going to go import this so that everything is nice and allocated. So in theory, this should work. There's a lot of cleanup and a lot of edge cases we're going to look at. Uh, but in theory, this should be fine. We've got four minutes left. I'm just wondering what we can do. Uh, the distro, oh, the distro is Debian. It's nothing special. It's just Debian testing. <laughs> I said it fast. Sorry, Australian and probably too much tea. So sometimes I talk a little quickly, but uh, yeah, it's just Linux Debian. It's nothing, nothing too special. Uh, so yeah, actually this thing here, you'll see that I pop that down. So I, I run Xmonad. Uh, so there's a thing in Xmonad called scratch pads. Um, and so I can basically drop in and out anything that I want. So I have a particular GNOME terminal that I drop in and out with, um, <coughs> what should we call it? With uh, a scratch pad and, and a hotkey. And then this is just Tmux. Uh, so this is just Tmux for my terminal muxing. So I'm going to commit this first pass at the mutation webhook with allocation. Um, so we have we have three minutes left. I think we might sort of wrap up here. Unfortunately, I kind of wanted to see if we could get to a point where we actually had this working, but this got us this got us to a, a pretty happy place. I think there's a there's a bunch of edge cases that I think we're going to explore a bit more, um, but. Once you get through sort of like realizing that webhooks really are about managing JSON structures as they come through and applying patches to them so that you that, that the Kubernetes system can pick those up on the way through, things are really good. Um, and then, <coughs> you know, and, and learning about like JSON patches and that kind of stuff and where the data is coming from and where it's going to, you can start really playing with this and it's, it's really quite, quite cool. Um, any other questions here just before we wrap up? No, it looks like cool. Do, 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 do. People run a whole bunch of Linux stuff. Yeah, huge Linux fan. Um, maybe another interesting bit since we're on the topic. Um, this up here is actually a bash. Uh, bash. Uh, where are we? Make the Kube shell. This is actually a bash. Uh, in a bash. What are we? Bash shell that's just running inside a um, a Docker container. And um, this just gives us access to all the tooling. So if you actually go into the GitHub repository for Agones, uh, you'll see there's a whole uh, section on building and developing, uh, and it'll take you through all the tooling, which is basically all uh, provided by Make and Docker. Uh, we try and keep the dependency levels for being able to work on this project really low. Uh, so you can actually fire off as long as you're running Make and or Docker, you're pretty much good to go. If you're running Windows, we have a whole setup under uh, WSL, so you know Ubuntu or Bash for Linux, uh, Bash for Windows. Windows. Um, so you can run it all through that and it actually works really nicely. <coughs> it's a bit more set up on Windows, but it totally works and it's great. Um, before we wrap up today, any questions or anything like that, please chuck them in chat right now. Uh, I think I'll wrap up in about a minute, but I just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who hung out with me today. Um, it was really nice having a really nice audience and a lot of new people showed up, which is great. Um, still trying to work out how to set this up when I'm at work, so I will do better with making sure my mic volume is better and stick my mic in front of my face a little bit more. Um, there's links below to the Gones project. If you want to get involved, jump on Slack, follow us on Twitter. Um, if you're interested in anything that I'm doing and you've liked what we've heard, please, yeah, uh, follow me along on Twitch. Um, follow me on Twitter so that often I do sort of impromptu stuff as well. And uh, I like to like drop it off, but usually 9 a.m. Pacific Tuesday morning is usually when I do my usual stream. Uh, that's my regular set time. Uh, so that's pretty good. And if there's anything in particular you want me to show off about how Agones works or how Agones uh, internally works, uh, just drop me a line anywhere. Uh, all my details are available pretty much everywhere throughout all the links that I have on Twitch, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Uh, I really appreciate you all hanging out. I hope you all learned stuff. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely reach out. Throw me a note. Uh, Twitter DMs are open, everything. So you can always reach out uh, and get in contact. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time, everyone. And uh, we'll see you at the very least uh, next Tuesday at 9 a.m. And um, we'll see how things goes from there.